Hey what's going on guys, Games here. I'd like to introduce a new series that I'm gonna start on this channel which would be creating the tic-tac-toe game using Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. So uh, let me say a few words uh, behind the reasons of choosing this sort of an algorithm. So recently I have embedded efficiently updatable neural networks from Stockfish chess engine to my own chess engine which uh, uh, has increased the performance, the, the plane strength of my engine dramatically. And this made me uh, have a look at the implementations of uh, uh, Lila Chess Zero Chess Engine, which is based on Monte Carlo Research and neural networks as well to guide the Monte Carlo Research itself. So that's a completely different search algor algorithm can, compared to Minimax with the alphabet of Pranin that is used in, say, Stockfish and in the most traditional chess engines. So uh, I really got interested in implementing the Monte Carlo research on my own, but uh, I wanted to start with something uh, simpler than chess, so I decided to create a tic-tac-toe AI that would be powered by the Monte Carlo research algorithm. And uh, in this series, we're, we're going to be creating this sort of a, uh, AI step by step. First, we'll implement the game itself, like board representation, uh, uh, getting the win or lose state, uh, generating moves, making moves, all this stuff, and also we'll implement the search algorithm itself. So here I get two files, so this is the file for the tic-tac-toe game and uh, the board class in particular, and here is the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm that we have in order to actually find the best move. And if you like this series, uh, there is uh, even greater improvement uh, exists here. We can later Im uh, can embed the neural networks uh, to integrate this uh, the neural network with the current Monte Carlo tree search to actually guide the search. Uh, in order to understand how exactly this works and why this is needed, you need to uh, have at least a very basic understanding of the, how the Monte Carlo tree search works itself and Instead of trying to explain you the theory behind it, uh, I would rather recommend to watch this video by John Levin, uh, who is the uh, teacher in some British university. Very smart guy, very clear explanations. Even Dan Blake Kobeck again managed to understand literally everything from his lecture. It's not really that long, only 15 minutes basically, but it's, it's absolutely exciting and incredible 15 minutes. Uh, that I have in my life while watching this video. Uh, I, I watched this several times to get a better understanding and now I'm so grateful to John. And yeah, this was really fantastic ex experience. Uh, in our series, we would be uh, rather uh, focusing on the implementation. Uh, we, we, we would be focusing on implementation rather than the theory behind it and explanations. But still, uh, I highly recommend to watch this video entirely without skipping in order to make sure that you understand how the algorithm works. Well, obviously, if you already know how it works, then you can just follow the tutorial straight ahead. So this is kind of it from my side. And again, I'd like to motivate you a little bit. Uh, first, uh, I want to demonstrate you how the end product of what we're supposed to be developing in this series looks like. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, going to be making tutorials on integrating the neural networks. Well, most likely I will, but I just didn't yet work this out. I'll definitely need to do this for to to uh, make a neural network chess engine one day. But regarding tic-tac-toe, I didn't yet work this out. So the only thing uh, uh, I did already, uh, I've embedded this Monte Carlo research to the tic-tac-toe game. And here's, here is the result, basically. So... Uh, I need to say uh, uh, I need to enter the coordinates like x and y or row uh, or a column and row in order to put a, a put my x on. So AI responds like this, and I'm just trying to play a little bit. So you see, like it's quite pretty smart. It doesn't look it's, if say it would play here, I could have played cross here and then win in any case, but it doesn't allow me doing this. So instead, he's trying to mate me. Well, in order to weigh this, I need to say 2 and 1, okay, and now here he's trying to mate me again, so I need to say 1 and 3, okay, and finally 3 and 2, and we got a draw. 
just to give you uh, a little insight regarding the at least application of this Monte Carlo research, the matter of uh, strength of the algorithm, the matter of accuracy of how, how strong it plays, is the matter of number of iterations it walks, th it, it walks through. So we can limit the strength by limiting the number of iterations or limiting the time. So let's say in a current given amount of time, it would be walking through the fixed number of iterations. Well, the more time it, it has, uh, the more iterations it walks through. The more iterations it walks th through, the more accurate results the search Re, uh, returns again like mm, we're gonna be uh, talking about the implementation when it comes to the actual implementation and if you want just to have some general understanding again like just make sure to watch this video by John Levin it's absolutely incredible experience and gives the clearest understanding possible ever but I just want to show you the idea so let's say I use only five iterations instead of five well, instead of five thousands and for, for exactly the same game, you will now see how poorly uh, it was started behaving, basically. So, uh, so how poorly it playing, uh, how poor play, uh, it will start playing really poorly. So, I'm going for the same stuff. And let's say one and two. And you see, like, it doesn't prevent me from winning the game. You see, like, it just doesn't prevent me. So, I can say, like, 3.1 and... Hold on a sec. Is this some sort of a bug here? Oh, no, it's not a bug. I just... <laughs> okay. 3-1. No, I, I need to say 1-3. Okay. <laughs> okay, he managed to win. <laughs> okay, no, it's not a bug. Definitely not a bug. Okay, 1-2. Okay, uh, sorry. 2-1 and 3 and 1. Okay, now finally I won. So with only five iterations, you see like... It doesn't play that strong but if, again like if we just said this for at least a thousand iterations it would already start playing much stronger game of tic-tac-toe so just to give you an idea so just playing in the center the strongest move possible in this position uh, at least to my understanding of tic-tac-toe so we, 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 we're gonna draw this game so uh, again because there is no chances for uh, player X to win this because only if it would, would have played here then I could have made make a cross here and so on so you, you can try to play versus this AI on your own to um, get an idea of its strength so that's kind of it so this is the exact uh, end result uh, that was we, that we will came up with at the very end of this series well at least uh, at the very end of the first section of this series and if there would be uh, some interest in, interest around this project then I will probably make uh, I'll probably continue this series to go for the next step of uh, adding the neural network to guide this Monte Carlo research which hopefully would be even more exciting compared to the first part well okay guys so this is it from my side I hope to see you in the next videos within this series until that time and take care